Welcome back to Columbus. Opening night, they have shoehorned 100,000 into the horseshoe. A rare Thursday night start here at Ohio State. Joining us now, the third member of our team, Here's Carissa Thompson. Well, guys, high atop the horseshoe on a gorgeous evening in Columbus. Here we go again, right? And as you guys mentioned, Ohio State enters the season with huge expectations, especially for Terrell Pryor. Talking to offensive coordinator Jim Bowman yesterday, he said he's looking for consistency out of Pryor. He can't afford to have those mental lapses like he did, let's say, in that game against Purdue. Pryor admits, hey, I didn't work as hard as I could have in the first two years. I kind of believe my own hype. He says, I'm ready to work hard and I'm ready to to lead and it starts right here tonight guys and talking to Jim Trestle he said going up against a team like Marshall is one of the most difficult tasks why because what they saw on film might not be what they see on the field they have an entirely new coaching staff we'll see how it plays out right now thank you Carissa there indeed is 10-year head coach Jim Trestle look at that sterling record he has got 94 wins with the Buckeyes he is going to get a man who is uh, very new to the head coaching business. His first collegiate game as a head coach, Doc Holliday. Oh, Carissa pointed out some valid points. It's about the unknown that Ohio State's going up against. Doc Holliday spending the last couple of seasons as the associate head coach at West Virginia. Marshall, they have won the toss. They have elected to receive. 87 degrees here at kickoff. True freshman Drew Basil will kick things off for Ohio State. Here we go. Kick fielded at the eight-yard line. Andre Booker starts left, and he is rocked down. Ball is loose. Who's got it? Buckeye football, what a start for OSU. And how do you spell disaster if you're the thundering herd? Good pursuit and effort down the field by the special teams of Ohio State. And to deliver a blow right on the football, jarring it loose. That's Dorian Bell forcing the fumble, number 11, middle of your screen. What a hit picked up by Nate Oliver. And E, did you see how he put his helmet right on the football and at the point of contact? Great job of hunting it down. Key turnover for Ohio State. I saw four Marshall Thundering Herd players going after that football, and Ohio State comes up with it. First play on offense for Ohio State. Terrell Pryor wants to throw. Aggressive underneath. They get it to the tight end. Stoneburner, who's down to the 11-yard line. Now Terrell Pryor, fresh off his Rose Bowl MVP performance last January. Look at the numbers from a season ago. Well, and I loved the start of this. The play call by Bowman. Let him stand tall in the pocket. This was one of the deficiencies he had a season ago. That time he knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football. No indecision for Terrell Pryor. In the backfield next to Pryor, Brandon Sane. Three receivers in the game. Another first down for the Buckeyes. Pryor wants to throw. Tries to get it to Sane out of the backfield. Throw a little bit too high. Big Ten football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips Television. Hot and steamy here at the shoe. Full house as per usual. Second down and ten. Buckeyes can get another first down inside the two-yard line. Two back backfield, Sane the deep man. They give it to him on the delay, and Sane squirts through the first hole, down to the six. It's going to bring up a third down early. Johnny Jones on the tackle. Eric, this is an important drive for Ohio State because this is one of the areas where they struggled at last year, and that's inside the red zone getting touchdowns. So this is an important drive. They have to punch this ball into the end zone. We expect to see equal time between Brandon Sane and Dan Boom Heron. A lot of weapons for Jim Trestle here in 2010. Now under center, Pryor takes the snap. Looks left, has a man wide open. First touchdown of the year, Demir Posey.
Chris, it's not supposed to be that easy. Well, and Terrell Pryor said, hey, you want to question my ball distribution, my decisiveness, my accuracy? Well, how about a back shoulder fade to start that thing off? Excellent ball placement. 27-year-old place kicker Devin Barclay comes on to try the extra point. Holder this year, Joe Bowserman. Barclay has it blocked, but it still goes through. Everything going the way of the Buckeyes <laughs> early in this one. Eric, let's go back to the touchdown here. And this is the maturation and development. Watch him stand tall in the pocket. Good job by the O-line. Back shoulder fade. Great job of his ball placement, Devere Posey, Terrell Pryor in sync. Look at this, D-back does not have a chance to make this play, even if he snuggled up with the receiver even more. That's understanding the offense and being, being more adept at the ball placement for Terrell Pryor. So we've played uh, a minute and 18 seconds in this ball game. Marshall's already fumbled it once, Ohio State the recovery, and a quick touchdown prior to Posey. We've seen that before. This kickoff brought to you by Hass Avocados. Drew Basil will kick it off for the second time in 78 seconds. This one a bit longer. It's going to go all the way into the end zone. Booker is going to stay in there, takes a knee. It'll be Marshall thundering her football on the 20. Well, and if you're Marshall, what you don't want to do is get down early and get this crowd involved. Ohio State, obviously a lot of rabid, intelligent fans. They got to get something going right here and put together a drive to take this crowd down. Here's a look at the veteran quarterback, fifth-year senior out of Louisville, Brian Anderson, getting the start. Anderson a year ago starting all 13 games for the Thundering Herd led him to the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl where they won against the Ohio Bobcats. Wants to throw on first down. It is complete out in the flat. It's a pickup of about four yards. He gets it to Aaron Dobson. Now for the Rotel Velveeta starting offense because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Offensive line for Doc Holliday's Thundering Herd. Tillman, Provacha, Schofield, Wood, and Campbell. Skill position, guys. They've got some good playmakers. Martin Ward will spend a lot of time with Andre Booker in the backfield. Chuck Walker, Troy Evans, and Antavius Wilson. He is their best receiver. He wears number nine. Right side, little swing, and it's going to get out to the 29-yard line. A pickup of four to Booker. It's going to bring up a third down and one. Take a look at the auto owner's insurance starting defense for the Buckeyes. Solomon Thomas getting the start for Nathan Williams at one of the ends. Cameron Hayward, he is the stud. Six and a half sacks a year ago. Linebackers, familiar names. Ross Holman, Brian Roll, and Andrew Sweat in the defensive backfield. Keep an eye on number five, Chindi Chekwa. He has got a bit of a hamstring issue. May not be able to play much today, but he's in the lineup right now. Third down and one. They fake it to Booker. The quarterback keeps it, and Anderson is snuffed down, shy of the first down line. And Ohio State is a team they have so much athleticism and speed at every layer up front in the D-line, second level with the linebackers, so they can really run through clean air and get to the football quickly. Look for Marshall to keep the tempo up and try to keep Ohio State off balance. So it's going to be a three and out. Here comes the punt unit for the Thundering Herd. Case Whitehead is their punter. Whitehead a year ago averaging 39 yards per boot. Back deep for Ohio State is number seven, Jordan Hall. And we've got a whistle and a uh, flag down. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Just took too much. There's our referee, Scott McElwee, giving the call to Doc Holliday, who's none too pleased. It'll cost him five yards. Well, and that's something that you typically see in an opener. That's just a mental error. Marshall guys got to get set and lock in. Plenty of time for Whitehead. It's a low end-over-end -end kick. Caught by Hall. Makes the first man miss. Makes the second man miss. Trying to get to the edge. Not going to get there. He's caught from behind as he crosses the midfield strike. 
Punt of 36 yards, a return of 12. Ohio State will have the ball for a second time, already on top, 7 to nothing here in the season opener. Welcome back to uh, Ohio State. The Buckeyes have already been in that end zone once. They lead Marshall 7 to nothing. If you're looking for an Indiana Towson game, go to Big10Network.com slash GameFinder to see where you can find it. Second possession for the Buckeyes. Both times they have started in Marshall territory. Again, prior to the skies, finds his guy, Devere Posey, his second catch. He gets out to the 44-yard line. Now for the Rotel Velveeta starting offense for the Buckeyes because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. A lot of starters up front that have done it before. Four returning starters, including Justin Boren. He was first team all Big Ten last year at left guard. Skill position guys, gonna see a lot of Sane, gonna see a lot of Heron. Sansenbacher had that great Rose Bowl, nine catches in that win over Oregon back in January. On the ground here, Brandon Sane. He's got a chance, Sane. Inside the 20, still on his feet, and Sane down to the four. Vinny Curry ran him down and saved a touchdown, but it's another huge game for the Buckeyes. Well, we talked to offensive coordinator Coach Bowman yesterday, and he said, look, this guy is a guy that feels his way. We clearly saw that, a patient runner, but he has the suddenness, Brandon Sane, to pop it in second gear. Good blocking down the field by Devere Posey. Sane, the former sprint champion here in Ohio, picks up 40 yards, ball inside the five at the four. They give it to Sane again, right side. He's got a chance. Touchdown, Ohio State. This is an Ohio State team that's incredibly confident. They're displaying that, and they're displaying what championship teams are made of. Two touchdowns in three minutes and 15 seconds to get this season started. Seven offensive plays for the Buckeyes. Two of the seven have resulted in touchdowns. Barclay, this time it is not blocked, and it's through. It's a 14-0 lead for the Buckeyes. Chance to catch our breath. Brandon Sane and the Buckeyes out of the shoot with their hair on fire. Big lead early for the Buckeyes. Ohio State has had the football twice so far in the first five minutes of this game. They've already scored two touchdowns. Drew Basil, his third kickoff of this ball game. This one a little bit short. Maybe he's got leg fatigue. Andre Booker fields from the nine. And Booker, he's got a crease out across the 40 to the 50. Got a man in front of him. Pushed out of bounds inside the 30. Andre Booker, a man who fumbled inside the 20 just a couple of minutes ago, atones and rips off 62 yards. Well, Andre Booker was booking. Watch him find the crease here. Great blocking up front. And then he just accelerates. And this is athleticism in second gear to hit the hole exactly what the thundering herd need. Now, what can they do with it offensively to capitalize on the field position? 63 yards on the return. You know how Jim Tressel values special teams. He's probably more upset about that play than he was happy about the two touchdowns. Brian Anderson, fifth year senior. He's the quarterback working out of the gun. Throws high, looking for Dobson. Nothing there. Well, you can expect Marshall, their spread team by design, so they want to use every blade of grass on this field, so to speak. They like to get you in space. They want you to apply your technique, and it forces Ohio State to be able to tackle well. Look at all the spacing on the field. Five receivers in the game now for Marshall on second and ten. Four of them to the left of the quarterback, Anderson. Flips it out, too hot to handle. Troy Evans has it go through the fingertips. It's going to bring up a third down. Eric, let's go back to that last touchdown. And we're going to see the fullback right here at the top of your screen. Look how he gets up here and he has a seal block. It's going to come right here. Nice job of sealing. And then the patience of Sane to feel that. Bounce it outside. Nose for the end zone. Check, please. Great execution by Ohio State. 
third down at 10, Jim Trestle has just sent in number 26, Tyler Moeller. Fifth-year senior from Cincinnati coming back from a horrific head injury. Great to see him on the field. Number 26 will hit you. Third down at 10. Martin Ward in the game in the backfield next to Anderson. With time. Sets up the receiver screen to Dobson. And Dobson lowers the head, but he's going to be short of the first down. Gain of six. It'll bring up fourth down and four. Well, and the problem when you play against Ohio State is when you get behind the chains, when it's third and long, and you're a team that's going up an aggressive speed type defense, you want to naturally go to screens. But that's not going to push it vertically, evidenced by that last play. So after the 63-yard kickoff return, Jim Trestle's defense holds, and the field goal unit will come on for Marshall. 41-yard field goal attempt. Tyler Warner. And the junior misses wide left. And Ohio State, they still have not been scored upon in 2010. And that's just remarkable for that defense to go out there. And it's a hot day, folks. They're grinding, digging deep. They just barely missed. But Eric, keep in mind now, oh, Ohio State, they have great players on defense, but they do have some young guys that are still wet behind the ears. And so a big stand like that does help to develop confidence. Third possession for Terrell Pryor and the Buckeyes. They've had the ball for three minutes and 15 seconds so far and scored two touchdowns. Handoff, Dan Heron. They call him boom for a reason. Lowers the head and picks up three, maybe four. Tackle made by junior captain for Marshall, Omar Brown. On studying these running backs, you look at Boom, and he may be a little quicker off the mark when he gets the ball than Saint. Saint's more of a guy, he's, he's patient, he has great feel, and can get outside. Boom is going to hit it and get it and get the tough yardage. Aaron stays in the game in the backfield next to Pryor. Tons of time. Going for the big play up top. It is caught Sands and Bucker. Picked up a 28 yards right over the middle. This is a classic example of how Terrell Pryor's gotten better. Good route. We talked about this. He understands where the cavity is in the defense. Sands and Bucker does a nice job sitting behind the linebackers. But that's a good ball strike by Terrell P Pryor. Excuse me. He stands tall in the pocket. Look at that ball. It's on the numbers right where it needs to be. Sonsenbacher, 36 catches a year ago. Marketing major from Toledo. First down and 10, Buckeyes again in Marshall territory. Little dump off underneath, and that may be the worst throw we've seen so far today from Pryor. Too low to handle for Sonsenbacher. Well, he's trying to get it out in front of Sonsenbacher so that he can catch it in stride. But if you notice that Terrell Pryor hasn't been throwing the ball on the run, and he hasn't needed to. He's got good fence around him up front. Offensive line doing a stellar job, but what I like is he's standing tall, he's surveying the defense, and he's throwing the ball with confidence. We saw him throw 37 times. Jim Trestle calling his number 37 times in the Rose Bowl. Should we expect more of that in 2010? If he continues to throw the ball with accuracy and the velocity that he is, of course. And that is just showing his skill set. New day for Ohio State football. Heron bounces to the outside. And Heron down to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Marquez Aiken. Now for the auto owners, insurance starting defense for Marshall. Up front, Vinny Curry. He's a Cincinnati native. Johnny Jones, Delvin Johnson, and James Rouse. Linebackers, that's where they have their best of chance. Mario Harvey, number 30. They say he runs a 4-3-5, 40-yard dash. He is an NFL prospect. In the backfield, one of their captains, Omar Brown. He's the safety alongside Donald Brown. So it's a brown out at safety for the Thundering Herd. Third down now for the Buckeyes. Third and five. Pryor, pump fake. Plenty of time. Wants his man. Posey has him beat, and it's too long. A little bit too strong for Posey. That would have been six. <laughs> and Terrell Pryor's mad at himself there because he knew he let one get away. But I'll tell you, that's a pretty good throw. I mean, he's putting it out there. This is zone coverage. Safety's trying to get over the top. But Posey's there, and he's available. Posey throttled down just a little bit in his route. Had he run that all out, 
that gets to the paint. So the punt team comes on for the first time here in the season for the Buckeyes. Man who's got a very important job in a, on a Jim Trestle team, Ben Buchanan. He is the punter this year. He's replacing John Toma, who did a great job a year ago. Buchanan just four punts last season. Here's his first of 2010. High arcing punt. Lands inside the five. And again, the Buckeyes... No, nope, they're going to say it's a touchback. It's a touchback. The ball was touched by Tyler Moeller when he was in the end zone. So the ball will be on the 20-yard line. A punt of 40 yards, net of just 20. Yeah, and, but when everything's working right, it's pretty much working right. Look at all those guys there. I mean, that's just hustle, that's effort, determination. Guys coming in on special teams wanting to make a big play. On September 18th, the Big Ten Network will unveil a remarkable new series that counts down the top athletes in the conference's rich history. Big Ten Icons, presented by Discover, hosted by the great Keith Jackson. Premieres Saturday, September 18th. Go to BigTenIcons.com for more information. That is going to be a, a special series to watch. Wouldn't be surprised if one of your former teammates, Pat Fitzgerald, makes the cut. On first down, pickup of a couple of yards for Andre Booker. Here's your uh, principal edge. Edge to the game. Well, you look at Ohio State's defense, fifth in turnover margin. It's a fast flow, get to the ball defense. They create a lot of opportunities for the offense. Tremendous ball skills on the back end. Now your principal financial group, edge to the game. Second down and eight. This time they try the left side. Booker. He gets squashed. Jamel Hines, senior out of Cleveland, one of the uh, Glenville Tar Blooders, stops him after a pickup of three. And this is a play to keep Ohio State honest, but I would take it out the playbook because they just run too quickly down the line. They call that playing the piano. When you can get down the line and get to the ball, Ohio State, they're too athletic. Got to keep spacing them out and go back to the screen plays if you're Marshall. Thundering Herd looking for their first first down. They're going to need five yards to get it. Anderson in trouble. Hayward can't bring him down. And that's going to be a first down for the Thundering Herd. Cameron Hayward had him in the sights, just couldn't wrap him up. Nice job of Anderson having pocket awareness and feel. Watch him. He's just going to feel Hayward pressuring him. Good job of sliding and escaping. Hayward's got to come to balance, and he gets that sack. Good block outside, and knowing where the sticks is. So a pickup of seven. That is the longest offensive play so far today for Marshall. First down and ten. Anderson with time. Pass is incomplete. It was bobbled by Martin Ward and then knocked out by Brian Roll. <laughs> if you're wearing number 36 in red, you're going to be a hitter. Oh, you do. And, and that's exactly what he did. And for the running back, you go back to the quarterback and say, hey, what? You, you lead me down a the path there. Good job of Roll. Just kind of sitting, good eyes, following the quarterback. Now deliver a strike. Martin Ward probably won't want to come back to that play anytime soon. Ward stays in the game in the backfield next to Anderson, working out of the gun. Underneath, again, passes bottle. Troy Evans can't hang on, and then he's just dumped by a host of Buckeye defenders. Eric, when you play against Ohio State, you certainly, you can't beat yourself. And right now, Marshall's leaving some plays on the field that they have to make count. I mean, that time, they, the goes, wide receiver sits down. It's five yards. Now, once again, they're up against it. You can't get in third and long against Ohio State because they pin their ears back and they come after you and force you to make a play. Third down, Anderson sets up a middle screen, and that's another dropped pass. Trying to get it to the tight end, Lee Smith. And the pass was behind him, but he cannot hold on. Anderson now just one for his last seven, but his receiver's not helping him out a bunch. No, the receivers are looking for the Judd's machine right about now. And because the ball's on the numbers, you got to help your quarterback out. 
they're trying to sit down in the zone underneath coverage of Ohio State, and they're just not catching the rock. So the punt team comes on for Marshall. Case Whitehead will kick it away. Back deep, number one, Dan Heron, and also number seven, Jordan Hall. There's a flag down as Jordan Hall will return it. He's brought down at the 40. We'll have to sort this one out. Scott McElwee is our referee. And he is going to call it against Marshall. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense. That penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. So again, good starting field position for the Buckeyes. They will take over on the 45-yard line when we come back. Doc Holliday's Marshall Thundering Herd down 14 to nothing to Ohio State. Buckeyes on top of Marshall, 14 to nothing. Buckeyes have the football for the fourth time here in the first quarter. Brand new offensive line for Ohio State. Five new guys in the game right now up front. And they go on the ground. Brandon Sane takes up a yard. Go interactive with Rotel and Velveeta Big Ten Blast game. Head to BigTenNetwork.com during every football game on the network to predict upcoming plays, participate in trivia, and create custom groups to compete and chat with your friends. Weekly winners receive great prizes, and the season's top performer will receive the ultimate tailgate package. Go to BigTenNetwork.com and take part in the Rotel and Velveeta Big Ten Blast. New five up front, Andrew Miller, Connor Smith, Corey Lindsley, Jack Muirt, and true freshman Andrew Norwell. Where's number 78? For Ohio State on that line. Fire with the rollout. Throws has a man. It's Grant Schwartz. Fifth year senior from Dana Point, California with the grab. And that's going to be a first down for Ohio State. Pick up of 11. And you know Terrell Pryor excels when rolling out and throwing the ball particularly to his left. Good job of knowing where the receiver is going to sit down at and putting the ball spot on once again. This is uh, by design that Ohio State has their entire backup offensive line in the game. Just wanted to get them out there uh, and get their, uh, their, their feet wet here in 2010. Brandon Sane gets down to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Michael Janik, a pickup of three. Well, and if you're Coach Rippon, defensive coordinator for Marshall, you're understanding that you got to squeeze these running lanes. Look at the running lanes here. you got to close down and give those backs, make them make moves in the backfield. That was Zach Bourne, fullback from Pickerington, number 44, looking like his brother, uh, the uh, all Big Ten left guard. Bourne, a fullback, just blowing up Mario Harvey to give Sane a crease. Well, and here's the rub, Eric, for Marshalls. They want to bring the heat and bring pressure, but they're not sure they can man up outside with Ohio State's receivers. On the run, passes high, but it's caught by Schwartz, his second catch of the season. Now let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover game break. Eric Banks looking good for Indiana, hosting Towson. Already up 7-0. How about this run by Darius Willis? 49 yards for the touchdown. Hoosiers knocking on the door for another score, up 14-zip. Indiana a year ago, 4-8, and 1-7 and in Big Ten play, but uh, they've got that senior quarterback in Ben Chappell. Expectations, possibly, in Bloomington. Yeah, one of the best teams with a bad record last year. Third down at three. Ball is loose, picked up by Pryor. Trying to make something out of nothing, and he throws it. That's a dangerous play. That is not something that Jim Trussell wants to see. And that's where Coach Bowman talks about a player reverting. Terrell Pryor, that time fumbles the snap, picks it up, but don't try to be a hero here. Live to see another day, because this ball should have been intercepted or could have been intercepted. You talk about judgment. We talked about that in the open, said, can he consistently make good decisions? That was a poor choice. He has to keep that in mind. They're going to try a long field goal here. Coach Trestle calls timeout and he's going to give uh, his squad a chance to think this one over. Drew Basil, who uh, we're told has a huge leg, it looks like he's going to try this. 
Eric, you know what's been interesting, though, watching Terrell Pryor? We've seen the complete route tree from him. We've seen fade routes. We've seen the crossing routes sitting down over the middle. We've seen deep seam routes, out cuts. And he has thrown the ball consistently with accuracy and velocity. I did not see that a season ago. Mechanically, he looks sound. And it's been most impressive. Ohio State with two touchdowns early in this ball game. Prior a pass to Devere Posey. And then a rushing touchdown, Brandon Sane. 14-0 Buckeyes. Looking for three here. True freshman, Drew Basil. He is uh, going to be their long field goal kicker. 53-yard attempt. It's blocked. Oh, this is not what Ohio State wanted. This is going to be six for Marshall. Rashad Jackson picks up the loose ball and runs it in for a touchdown for the Thundering Herd. Gap, discipline, execution, every single time, never taking a playoff. That time, the special teams, Ohio State, allowed Marshall to get good surge up front. There it is right in the middle of the screen. Beautiful shot, folks. That's Johnny Jones with the block. Good arm extension by Jones, but it starts with his penetration and surge up front. So Johnny Jones with the block. It's picked up by Ahmed Shakur. And Shakur goes 51 yards on the return, and Ohio State gives up seven. And so some uh, kinks still to be ironed out for Ohio State. We continue in the first quarter. Marshall on the board. It's Ohio State 14, Thundering Herd 7. Welcome back, everyone. We're in Columbus, Ohio. Marshall, they have just uh, scored their first points of the year. A blocked field goal picked up and run in from 51 yards by Ahmed Shakur. And that's an igniter for Marshall. Special team stepping up. That's a shot of adrenaline. Kickoff fielded at the 10. Jordan Hall. Out across the 30 to the 31. That's Jamal Berry on the return. Let's take a look at that block. What happened, Chris? Eric, any time you get a block kick, it's usually a result of great penetration and surge up front. And then watch it here as we let this roll. Johnson's going to get good push. Great look. Push, push, push. And there it is. Excellent extension. Beautiful right here. And then great job of being Johnny on the spot, Shakur, and having his GPS locked on the end zone. Take a look at the United States Marine Corps salutes. It's going to be Jake McQuaid, tonight's leader of the game. He is the long snapper. Just saw him on that snap a moment ago. GPA of 3.59. He's one of the smarties in the Big Ten. We salute Jake McQuaid. Play clock winding down. Terrell Pryor wants to throw on first down. Got some green in front of him, and he picks up seven yards on first down. Interesting, uh, interesting subject we're talking about the coaching staff for Ohio State yesterday. They mentioned that Terrell Pryor, his instinct is not to run. His instinct is to stand in the pocket and throw, and they're actually trying to work for them to get out of the pocket and use that great speed he's got. Well, yeah, and the viewer's probably saying, well, how does that make sense? He was a leading rusher a season ago with 800 yards or just under 800, but if you watch him on rollouts, he keeps his eyes down the field. He wants to throw it first. And a flag before the snap. This is going to go against Ohio State. False start. Offense. Number 76. Five-yard penalty. Now they've got the starters on the offensive line back in the game. It's J.B. Shugarts, junior from Klein, Texas. Call for that penalty. And not to hit the rewind button to a season ago, but in the opener to Naval Academy, Ohio State jumped out early and then had a bit of implosion. Keep an eye on it here. Pryor wants to throw. Sonsenbacher. <laughs> X 
explosive are the Buckeyes in 2010? 65 yards prior to Sonsenbacher. Well, and if you're Ohio State, you gotta love it. Watch Sonsenbacher get the defensive back and trail, pushes to the post, and you will not find a better throw. I've seen a lot of Heisman candidates make that throw. Excellent execution by Ohio State. Curtains for the Buckeyes. Sonsenbacher, six touchdowns a year ago, picks up his first touchdown from 65 yards out. Devin Barclay for the extra point. He's a perfect three for three on the year. Lead back up to 14 for the Buckeyes. 21 to seven is our score. Terrell Pryor looking fantastic. Throwing the football here in the first quarter at the shoot. 122 remaining first quarter. The second ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State on top of Marshall, 21 to seven. Carissa. What's the, uh, the mood on that Ohio State sideline right now? Well, well, first of all, it's starting to rain, so everyone's grabbing their jackets. But, uh, you know, I mentioned Terrell Pryor really asserting himself as that leader after that blocked field goal. He got up in the vet. Him and uh, quarterbacks coach Nick Siciliano kind of exchanged some words, and he went up and down the line targeting Devere Posey and saying, let's go. Meanwhile, Cameron Hayward was doing the same thing on the defensive side, so a good sense of leadership on both sides of the ball down here, guys. Yeah, thanks, Carissa. Cameron Hayward, the senior he is one of the six captains this year for Ohio State. Terrell Pryor not one of the captains, he's a junior. It's very rare for Jim Trussell to give juniors the mantle of uh, captain. Does happen occasionally, James Laurinaitis, a couple of true. years ago. 2007. But when, I think, when you think of leadership, you don't have to be a captain to demonstrate leadership. And I think clearly, as Carissa pointed out, Terrell Pryor just demonstrated that. Thundering Hurt had the football. Ryan Anderson continues out of the shotgun, now seemingly changing the call. Tyler Mullerin defensively for the Buckeyes. And Anderson delayed handoff to Booker. Nowhere to go, tries to bounce it outside. Here comes Moeller, can he run him down? Yes! Tyler Moeller, his first game in two years with the tackle in space. That's Talk about the tackling space, is Howard Griffin likes to stay in the studio, pull over, officer, watch him reel in the back on this play. Great intensity by Moeller, and even more impressive speed to get to the sideline. How does a guy with the last name of Moeller, who grew up in Cincinnati, not go to Moeller, instead go to Colerain? Unbelievable, but a kid who has toughness in his DNA, and obviously great speed. This last year with that uh, head injury, just great to see him back playing again. Anderson wants to throw. It's a uh, design pass that was behind Aaron Dobson that is caught for a first down. Exactly. That's that back shoulder fade. This is tough to cover. Being a former defensive back, you're taught to stay on top. It's clearly the deep back is doing that. Now this is just tough. The only way to get back is to plant and drive and be a football player. That's good ball distribution. And that's Travis Howard, redshirt sophomore from Miami. Expected to get a lot of playing time today with Chimdi Chekwa a little bit uh, banged up with a hamstring. And the Buckeyes have an important game next week against the Miami Hurricanes. Jim Tressel and his staff want to make sure that all his guys are as healthy as possible for that game. Hand off Booker. Starts right, goes left, and is swarmed. That's going to be a negative yard play, a loss of two. John Simon and others on that stop. That'll do it for the first quarter of play here at the Shoe. Ohio State, they've opened it up on offense in 2010. They lead 21-7. One quarter here at Ohio State, Jim Trestle has got to be happy with the offense. Three touchdowns by three different guys. Great defense, only two first downs allowed for Marshall. But the special teams, very uh, un-Ohio State-like. Special teams has been poor. A blocked field goal for a touchdown, a 63-yard kickoff return allowed. And an extra point was blocked at the line. Did go through, but it was blocked. On second and 12, pass is complete. And Tavius Wilson with his first grab of 2010. That is a pickup of 10 yards. It's going to bring up third down and short for Doc Holliday's thundering herd. That was a great ball strike by Anderson. That time Ohio State's dropped back into zone coverage. They bluffed Marshall a bit. Soft zone. Good job of getting that ball over the cornerback Howard's head. Third down and two. 
senior Jamel Hines looking over the sideline for the play call. Buckeye defense trying to get off the field. Anderson hands it off inside. Nothing doing. Andre Booker is swarmed and brought down. Dexter Larimore catches him at the line of scrimmage. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover Game Break. Thank you, Eric. Minnesota opening on the road against Middle Tennessee. John Hazy, same week that his father suffered a stroke. Hazy has had a big game. His second TD of the game, one more than all of last season. Gophers up 14-0. Why is there... Thank you, Dave. Fourth down and one after some thought. Marshall's going to punt this football away. A little consternation by Doc Halliday, but boy, on the road in the opener, trying to make a statement. Good defense. Has to be some no trust in that offense to move Thank the you. chains. Fourth down and one. They elect to punt the football. Case Whitehead to punt it away. Jordan Hall back deep, standing on his 10-yard line for Ohio State. Flags down all over the field. High kick, end over end, fielded by Hall, who was immediately brought down at the 11-yard line. We'll have to sort it out. It was that uh, super linebacker, Mario Harvey, who brought him down with some authority. And now some, uh, some guys getting Getting into it down there about the <laughs> five yard line. It's hot out there. It's hot. You want to see that feisty temperament and demeanor, though. Guy scratching and clawing. Now that's going to go once again against Marshall. And again, this is something you see in openers: mental errors, lack of assignments. Legal formation, kicking team. Five men in the backfield. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay fourth down. But that will cause heartburn to a coach. And he, Doc Holliday's giving it to his guys, saying, look, we got to be more assignment sound. That is infuriating. The odds, end of the run. First down, Ohio State. The original uh, verbiage was that they're going to replay fourth down, but on second thought, it's just going to add the five yards to the end of the return. It'll be Ohio State football, first and ten, ball on the 15-yard line. Breyer back under center, pitch out, right side, Heron. Cut down after a nominal gain. Ahmed Shakur on the stop in space. Tonight's Verizon text to vote question is, will Ohio State play in the 2011 BCS Championship game? Text your vote to 20284. Vote one for yes. Vote two for no. We'll announce the results later in the game. Buckeyes begin the season ranked two in the country. Well, and to that point, I asked Coach Trussell, I said, have you noticed the football demeanor change in your team since the Rose Bowl success? And he said, I hope not, because that means that they think that we've arrived. And we have it. We can still work to improve and get better. Prior to throw, in trouble. Caught from behind. That's going to be the first sack of the ball game. Vinny Curry with the sack. That's got to be special for Vinny Curry. This is feel. He's got to feel that. That timer's got it. On sportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 18. 15-yard penalty. First down. Defense. I know you guys want to get hype out there. You make a big play, but now you let Ohio State off the hook. Now, Vinny Curry, number 99. This is a special game for him. He was raised in Neptune, New Jersey, but played a year of high school ball in Cincinnati at Harmony Community School. Uh, his coaches there, Name some Buckeye fans will remember Carlos Snow mm -hmm. and Benny Clark. Guys from the late 80s at Ohio State, very good players. Then he said he was drawn with them over the last couple of weeks. First down and 10 after the penalty. Pryor wants to throw. Tons of time again, showing off that big arm. Incomplete. He was looking for Posey. It is broken up deep in the backfield by Omar Brown. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover game break. 
Thanks, Eric. I want to update you on what's going on in Bloomington as Towson has gotten on the board against the Hoosiers. Chris Hart, five-yard strike to Tom Ryan. Indiana, though, still up by 10, 17 to 7. Second down to 10 after that incompletion. Doc Holliday's bunch trailing Terrell Pryor and the Buckeyes, 21 to 7. 12 minutes and change remaining here in this first half. Quick little screen, trying to get the ball in space. Chris Fields, redshirt freshman from Painesville, Ohio. His first catch of 2010, a pickup of three. He's trying to keep Marshall off balance. First time they've really gone to that little slip screen. Now it's third and third and a little bit for Ohio State. And these are the times when Terrell Pryor likes to look for Sonsenbacher. He's the guy that usually sits down in the cavity in the defense. There he is right there. Look at the total yards for Ohio State. Almost 200 so far. Terrell Pryor's already hit five different receivers. This time he chooses to run. This is a designed quarterback run, and he is going to be snuffed. Can't even get to the 30-yard line. Mario Harvey, that man again, number 30 in white. Mario Harvey runs him down. Well, I think visibly it's hard to delineate how big this kid is. He's one of the biggest quarterbacks you'll see. 6'6", 240. You see it takes a bunch of folks to get him on the ground. And Terrell Pryor, as the coaches say, he probably has the fastest play speed, maybe not 40 speed, but play speed of any Buckeye on the team. So the Thundering Herd, they force a punt on fourth down at five. Ben Buchanan, the punt it away. Sophomore punter replacing John Toma. Gets a good snap. Almost had a block. Short kick. Fair catch is called for. And it's going to be a Marshall ball on the 35, but there is a flag down on the field. Oh, that's going to go against Marshall. Omar Brown was the man who was in the backfield, and I think he got a piece of the punter. And once again, they let that fish off the hook. You have to stay on your feet. You lose control when you don't stay on your feet and you don't come to balance. And for Marshall, you're thinking, we keep stubbing our toe. You go out and you play solid defense, then you have a special teams breakdown. Well, that's not an automatic first down. That's only going to be a penalty of five yards. It was fourth and six. But it brings up an interesting play call here. Punt team for Ohio State comes back onto the field. So they're going to punt it just with an advantage of an extra five yards. This man right Punting here. Punting kicker. Defense. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Jim Trestle frequently says the most important part of a football game is the punt. That would make Ben Buchanan the most important player on this year's <laughs> Ohio State Buckeye team. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of film review so far on the special teams. Looks like they're getting Marshall. It's getting good penetration right in the middle. They're coming right up the gut. See the personal protector here trying to make sure this time, plenty of room to punt that ball away. Calling for the fair catch. Troy Evans makes it at the 20-yard line. Marshall will have the ball when we come back. Big Ten Network football is brought to you in part by Verizon. Own the airwaves. The signal is yours. Verizon. Rule the air. By fresh, creamy Haas avocados. Nothing else will do. And by Sonic. America's drive-in. School's not in session here at Ohio State, but that uh, makes no difference. Another full house here at the Horseshoe. On first down, Marshall. They start on the ground. Martin Ward, sophomore from Jonesboro, Georgia. Goes over left tackle, tackled by Solomon Thomas. Thomas getting some playing time with Nathan Williams. Sideline with a knee injury. Pick up of three yards on first down. Yeah, Martin Ward averaged five yards a carry last season, and he's usually the between-the-tackles runner. Good job of getting the tough yardage 
right in the teeth of the Ohio State defense. Gain of seven. Second down and three. Quarterback keeps it. Anderson is going to be wrapped up by Dexter Larimore. Larimore's had a good first half. 50-year senior from Maryville, Indiana. Our Liberty Mutual Alumni Spotlight. How about good old number 36? Chris Spielman, Ohio State linebacker, 1984 to 1987. This guy was an absolute beast. Two-time All-American, 1987 Lombardi Award winner. Just recently enshrined in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. And as a high schooler, he was on the cover of a Wheaties box. Doesn't get any bigger than that. Excellence in Chris Spielman. Third down, pass incomplete, trying to squeeze it to Aaron Dobson, and it's going to be a penalty on Devon Torrance. Torrance a little bit too close to Dobson with that pass in the air. Torrance trying a little Jan Sport backpack coverage, but he got a little too tight. Pass interference, defense, number one. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. See the contact. You want to snuggle up with the receiver, but it's a lot of contact. There it is. Chris, you paid DB in the, uh, this conference. Your thoughts on the corners this year for the Buckeyes? Well, Check was one of the top cover guys that you'll see. Both corners are physical in run support. Check was probably as good as I've seen in terms of one-on-one -on -one coverage. Fresh set of downs. Ward. Breaks into the secondary of the Buckeyes and dumps himself down to about the 42-yard line. 18-yard rush for Martin Ward. And this is Marshall saying, look, we, we've taken your best bunch. We're gonna, we have our nose bloody, but we're going to fight back. Watch this Skittles move here. Right there at the end. Good job by Ward finding the crease. This Marshall offense working quickly. They get back to the line and they again give it to Martin Ward. Pick up a four if it stands. There is a flag down on the field. The officials getting quite a workout. Holding. Offense. Five. Ten yard penalty. Replay first down. CJ Wood called for that penalty. That'll back him up. Text keyword Rotel to 20284 to enter the Rotel feed their game face sweepstakes. The winner will receive 52 weeks of groceries. That's a $5,200 value and a trip to a college football game of their choice. The Rotel feed their face game sweepstakes. Setting up a wide receiver screen. It's complete. Antavius Wilson is dropped at the 50-yard line. Tackle made in space after a pickup of just two. That'll bring up second down and 17. We've seen a number of screen plays tonight, and typically that's what you do when you have an aggressive, fast-flowing defense. You want to use their aggressiveness against them, let them get up the field, and then drop in that little screen play. Doc Holliday replacing Mark Snyder. Snyder, the head coach last five years at Marshall. He is now the defensive coordinator at University of South Florida. If that Snyder name sounds familiar to you Buckeye fans, he was co-defensive coordinator at Ohio State under Trestle a number of years ago. Another short completion, Antavius Wilson, tackled quickly made by Tyler Moeller. Now with Moore, the man who just made the tackle, let's go down to Carissa Thompson. Carissa. Guys, no one's happier to be on the field than Tyler Moeller. Just over a year ago, you guys had been mentioning the head injuries when he was on vacation with his family in Florida. He got into an altercation with another customer and sustained a fractured skull and serious brain injuries, you guys, after going undergoing extensive surgery. He's been cleared and back on the field. And as for if he's okay, he goes, I feel like myself again. And he looks great. And that is a forward pass. That's a shovel. I think they're going to rule that a forward pass it is. And that's just going to be an incompletion. Pass. Fourth down. So it's going to bring up fourth down in a bunch. And Eric, just to follow up on Carissa's point about Moeller, I mean, talk about the mental toughness of this guy sustaining a brain injury and coming out and ready to play with physicality, knowing that you're in a game where you may have some head contact. And that's what he does. He's a thumper. 
He's, he's going to go up and hit you. He's got good speed, but he is known for closing and finishing the deal and wrapping up his guys. So commendable the way that he has come back and the guts that he is showing out there today. Jordan Hall, fair catch, makes it at the nine-yard line. Ohio State will start from there. 7.07 remaining. First half, Ohio State on top of Marshall by 14. Season opener for the Buckeyes here at Ohio Stadium. They're on top of Marshall by a score of 21 to 7. Junior quarterback Terrell Pryor under center takes it from Michael Brewster, hands it off to Brandon Sane, who is spun down after crossing the 11 yard line. He's uh, Chris Martin. I'm Eric Collins. So glad you could join us. And uh, we got to have some thoughts here. Jim Trussell, what's his uh, scouting report? What's his grading uh, so far through the first uh, 20 and a half minutes? Well, Coach Trussell knows that championship teams, they do it in all three phases of the game offensively, defensively, and on special teams. Offensively and defensively, they flash dominant. But on special teams, they've had some breakdowns that they need to correct. Special teams, yeah, we've seen a long kickoff return for Marshall. We've seen a blocked field goal attempt. Uh, 53 yards, it was blocked by Marshall and run in for a touchdown. And also an extra point was tipped at the line. That's not something that you'd like to see for Ohio State. Prior to the skies, it is complete. He finds his tight end, Jake Stoneburner. Pick up a 14 yards. This Stoneburner guy's got a chance. Sophomore from Dublin. He has got wheels. They say he runs a 4 6 40. Well, yeah, and he's a tight end. That he, he understands where the seam route is, so he's a tough cover for linebackers because, as you say, he does run well. He's a big body, good target for Pryor because he can catch balls outside of his frame. Tight end, sometimes a forgotten position for Ohio State, but we're told it won't be this year with Stoneburner. He's going to be a difference maker. Out of the gun, Pryor again to throw. Quick rip. It is incomplete, trying to squeeze it to Torian Washington. Eric, important to note, too, on Stern, Stoneburner, he's 6'5", 245, 250-ish, but he was a former wide receiver. And so you know that he can run, and particularly in vertical routes, and that's why Pryor's always looking for him in the seams. Torian Washington goes to the bench. He's uh, going to be an important guy, possibly, this year. Terrell Pryor and the Buckeyes looking for that uh, elusive third receiver. We know what Posey and Sonsenbacher can do. But what about Washington or Chris Fields or Corey Brown stepping up? That's what they're looking for at third option out wide. Hand off to Sane. Can't get the feet moving. He is tackled. Mario Harvey, nicknamed Thumper. After a gain of one, Harvey drops him. Well, and Harvey's the best player on this defense. He's six foot 250. Says he runs a 4-3, even if he runs a 4-5 at that weight. That's a pretty impressive matrix. That time, good job of getting through the trash on the field and wrapping up Brandon Saint. Harvey last year, first team All-Conference USA. So far today, Ohio State one for four on third downs. This one won't be easy to convert. Third down in a bunch, third and nine. Ryan straight drop back, wants to run. Dives out across the 35. That's going to be close. Needed to get to the 36. It's going to depend on the spot. They're going to give it to him. First down for Jim Trestle's bunch. And this is where Terrell Pryor's in his finest moments. Good feel. He's able to freelance when he needs to. And again, he's a long and linear player. As you see, rushed for almost 800 yards. So he's always a threat. When you're the linebackers, you got to keep your eyes on Terrell Pryor at all times. First Ohio State quarterback to lead the team in rushing since 1956. Don Clark, in case you're wondering, last man to do it. On first down, Pryor throws a laser beam. It's caught. Posey, his guy, once again, out to the 45-yard line. Another 19 yards prior to Posey. Well, you're going to see Pryor. He's going to ride Posey all the way. And he knows where he wants to go with the ball. Devere Posey does a nice job of working back towards his quarterback and working underneath the safety on a quick post. Posey 101 yards in the Rose Bowl last January. Picks up another 19 yards here from Pryor, who has thrown for 166 so far in this first half. Hand off, Sane again with a chance. What kind of speed do you got? Touchdown, Ohio State!
I have a feeling we're going to be saying number three for six an awful lot this year. Great blocking up front by the big guys. You're literally going to see this whole part like the Red Sea. Good job up front, good vision. And once he gets in the open field, he's a track guy, so you know he knows how to finish. Former Mr. Football here in Ohio, former sprint champion here in Ohio. 45-yard touchdown run for Sane, who has now gone over 100 yards on the day. 103 yards and two touchdowns for Brandon Sane. What a start to this is senior season. The senior from Piqua getting it done. Buckeyes up 28-7. Ohio State, their largest lead of the ball game, 28 to 7. Drew Basil will kick things off. Buckeyes just uh, finishing a 91-yard drive. Low kick, fielded by Andre Booker. Zigzags out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. A flag comes in late. It's a return of 22 yards. During the return, block in the back, receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Coming up, stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, and Howard will be along from our Chicago studios with scores and highlights. Not going to want to go anywhere. If you're Marshall, clock management. Under four minutes here, you're backed up. Look for more bubble screen or slip screens from the Thundering Herd. We thought we might see a little bit of a true freshman quarterback, Eddie Sullivan. He hasn't played so far today. It's been all Brian Anderson. Anderson hands it off. Martin Ward, nothing doing. He is brought down middle of the line. Jermail Hines and others on the tackle. Tonight's Verizon key connection. It has got a Marshall, Ohio State connection. There is a man from Ohio State Royalty. Marshall wide receiver coach Zach Smith. He is the grandson of Ohio State Hall of Famer, college football Hall of Famer. There he is, Earl Bruce. Just 27 years of age is Zach Smith. He spent his uh, last handful of seasons down in Gainesville working under Urban Meyer. Wanted to go out his own a little bit, and now on the uh, inaugural coaching staff for Doc Holliday at Marshall. There is a flag in the backfield, and that one may go against Ohio State as Brian Anderson went down hard. Anderson took a shot at the end of this play. Now that's an obvious call. They're going to call it on John Simon. You want your defense to play with aggression. Holding. Offense. Number 78. Down. I guess it wasn't the obvious call. I take it back. They're going to call a holding on Brandon Campbell. But it was declined. So it's going to be third down and nine. Jim Trussell obviously liked the incompletion. So instead of second and 19, it's going to be third and nine. Maybe the Buckeyes hoping to get the ball back with enough time to put another seven on the board before intermission. Third and nine, Anderson stays in and throws a pick. Ohio State football, middle linebacker, Brian Roll, still on his feet. He's got a chance. Touchdown, Buckeyes! Senior Brian Roll himself a touchdown and the Buckeyes lead swells once again. Brian Anderson knows you can't throw the ball late over the middle. Brian Roll, one of the best linebackers in the country, just following the eyes of Brian Anderson. Not only was a great play making the interception, but showing the speed and dexterity to get to the end zone. Second touchdown in the last 63 seconds for the Buckeyes. 
Trying to make it a 28-point lead. Devin Barclay. Extra point is true. Eric, when you're a linebacker, you have to trust your eyes and you have to believe what you see. You see the quarterback throwing it late over the middle, but Roll just follows his eyes. And then he becomes an offensive back. He knows how to finish. That's great instincts, better awareness. Look at the adjustment, ball skills, but not happy with just getting an interception. He wants six points. Three, six. Money for Ohio State. Yeah, last time the Marshall Thundering Herd played here against Ohio State, they actually made it a pretty darn good game. That was back in 2004. Ohio State ended up winning only by three. They won it 24-21. Mike Nugent had to kick a career-high 55-yard field goal last minute of the ball game to save the day for the Buckeyes. This time, Ohio State not messing around with the Thundering Herd. No. There's an old saying, you got to kill a fly with an ax. And these guys have brought it out early in Columbus. Another kickoff by Drew Basil. He's got to be uh, just gassed with all these kickoffs here in the first half. On the return, just a ferocious hit. Andre Booker goes down in a heap after a return of 16 yards. Well, here's our flashback. This is what it was like back in 2004. Just way too close for comfort for the Buckeyes. At that time, ranked ninth in the country. They needed a game-ending field goal for Mike Nugent, and they got it 55 yards out. Boy, when you're a kicker, you got one job. Everything on the line right there. Nugent nailed it to bail out the Buckeyes. Quarterback that day for Ohio State, Justin Zwick. Last in your phone book, but first in your heart. <laughs> 41 remaining first half. Andre Booker. Lively feet gets out to the 22 yard line. Dexter Laramore, another tackle, pickup of three. Marshall searching for answers here. They've had some things work successfully against this Buckeye defense, but Ohio State makes you earn every yard that you get. They're very physical at the point of attack. So it makes Coach Holiday go deep into his playbook. Coming into the game, Ohio State worried about the uh, lack of depth, at least compared to years past, along that defensive line. Another stop by that defensive line, blowing it up and helping Jermail Hines come in and make the stop after a pickup of two. Your thoughts on what we've seen of the big boys up front? Well, they've been strong in the trenches and at the point of attack. This is not a small offensive line by any stretch for Marshall, but Ohio State's been very physical. They've gotten great penetration and surge. And, and subsequently, they've made plays in the backfield. That timeout is called by Ohio State. They want to conserve as much time as possible in case they get the ball back. Saturday on the Big Ten Network, the opening weekend continuing. The Hawkeyes look to live up to their lofty expectations when they host Eastern Illinois and Penn State, Joe Paterno's bunch battling Youngstown State. Penn State, they are starting a true freshman quarterback. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Of course, Evan Royster is their star tailback. But Robert Bolden is going to get a start in his first college game. Coverage starts with the Auto Owners Insurance pregame show at 10.30 Eastern, only on Big Ten Network. Check local listings for the game in your area. I'm sure he spent a lot of time with Royster. It's going to be feeding him, especially young quarterback going in under the bright lights. Better look for Royster. Oh my. Taking charge. I like it. That's a senior no capitulation. Captain. Senior captain Lee Smith. Irate. Third down underneath. They get it to Smith. Well, he, uh, he talks the talk and he walks the walk. Gets himself a first down and Marshall will stay on the field offensively. Well, Smith is a tremendous football player. Tight end, just going to work a little seam route inside. He's a guy that causes matchup problems as well because he's 6'6", goes about 270, but he has great linear speed as well. First reception, 2010, for the senior from Powell, Tennessee. 
He is a guy who has got NFL in his future. Martin Ward tries the middle of the line. He stopped. Andrew Sweat and Cameron Hayward combined after a pickup of two. Clock is stopped. First time out of the second half. That's Marshall a time calls out. the timeout. Just a 30-second timeout with 1.15 remaining. We saw a good play there by Cameron Hayward. And when you look at him, not a lot of college defensive ends go 6'5", 290-ish. And they're strong at the point. They can hold in very solidly against the run. Hayward can do that. Oh, and when you get a game that's hot and you're down, oh, I like those battles. And <laughs> cornerback saying, hey, take a peek at the scoreboard when you get a sec. You're talking about Cameron Hayward. 6'5", 288 pounds, and uh, unofficially the longest arms in all of Division I football. We were talking to the coaching staff for Marshall, and the way that they described him, they said he's the type of guy that can reach across the table and scratch your nose and do it with power. Well, and that's the key when you're a bull rusher, is getting that extension and being able to disengage from the offensive line. So having long arms certainly is an attribute. They were at six and a half sacks a year ago. That was tops on the team. That was even more than Thaddeus Gibson. And then on to the NFL. Second down. Out in space, getting a running start. Troy Evans is caught from behind. That Madigan, Tyler Moeller, fifth-year senior, and his first game in two years with the stop. That's not an easy tackle. No, it's, it's so much space out there, especially when you get little shifty guys that can make you miss. But Moeller does a nice job of playing in space, coming to balance, gathering himself to make the open field tackle. Coaching staff has to be thrilled with Moeller here in the first 30 minutes. He was a big question mark, not having played in so long. Third down at five. Too high. Bodies flying. Troy Evans is stuck by Chimdi Chekwa. It was Chekwa on the coverage and C.J. Barnett finishing off the play. We talked about Chekwa and his skill sets as a cornerback, able to transition, turn and run with wide receivers. It's been noted that he's had a hamstring issue, but he's been able to open his gate and stay on top of wide receivers. Fifth-year senior from Claremont, Florida. He's the fastest corner on the roster. Marshall's going to have to punt it away. Half minute to play. Contact in the backfield, no flag. Buckeyes just get away from it. It's downed at the 30-yard line. Glad you're joining us for this, the season opener. Year number 121 of Ohio State Buckeye football. Find it here on the Big Ten Network with uh, Chris Martin. I'm Eric Collins. Carissa Thompson also in the house. Ohio State, they have had three different plays longer than 40 yards. Two of them by Brandon Sane, one by Dane Sonsenbacher. Darrell Pryor has been a big story in the first half. He has thrown for over 150 yards. Now he's going to take a knee as Ohio State is content with a 28 point lead. They're going to go to the uh, locker room up big. Well, and you better believe the special teams coach is going to be the first one standing on a chair huddling up his guys but Pryor has been masterful saying just as well offensively we've seen an explosion from the Buckeyes defensively roll in the troops have made a lot of big plays as well so Ohio State out of the shoot a year ago their first game they struggled against Navy not so much gets Marshall so far through 30 minutes. Let's head down to Carissa, who's standing by with the head coach for the Buckeyes. Well, Coach, you've been consistent in putting points on the board, but like any coach, you're going to be a stickler for special teams. How do you correct the wrongs in the second half? You know, it's still hard to stomach that blocked field goal, but um, our kids are playing hard. Their kids are playing hard. We've got a lot more work to do. 
Uh, everyone's been working hard in this hot sun these last four or five weeks, and, and we just got to keep driving. You know, these first games are all about evaluating your guys. You've asked for consistency out of Terrell Pryor. You have to be happy with his performance. Yeah, he, he's playing well. He's got a, a good presence about him, good command. Now he's got to do it for at least three, maybe four quarters. How, nice to have Tyler Moeller back on the field, huh? It really is. He's having fun. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Guys. Carissa, thank you so much. Ohio State, they roll up 291 total yards of offense. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings Halftime Report. Dave, Jerry, Howard are coming up next. Our halftime score, Buckeyes 35, Marshall 7. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big Ten. Today, we spotlight dotting the I at Ohio State. One of the great traditions in all of college football, dotting the I began in 1936 and occurs every time the Ohio State Marching Band performs Script Ohio before home games. Once the band has spelled out Ohio during the formation drill, a fourth or fifth year sousaphone player is bestowed the privilege of dotting the I. Dotting the I, champion, it's how you play. Kickoff quarter number three here at Ohio Stadium with Chris Martin. I'm Eric Collins, Carissa Thompson also on hand. Season opener now in the 121 year football history of Ohio State. Well, coming in the second half, too, you look at the scoreboard and you say, What does the coach say to his team with such a large disparity? What you want to do there, Eric, is just say, Look, you're not going to score. There's no magic bullet. You can't score 28 points in one play. But you got to continue to work your craft, stay in the game plan, and methodically try to meet success when you can. The start of the second half is presented by Sure Start. And we're ready to go. Marshall began with the ball to begin the game. Very briefly, they fumbled on the opening kickoff. Now they'll kick it off to begin the second half. Short kick, fielded at the seven. This is Jordan Hall. I'm sorry, Jamal Berry. Barry on the return and he gets out to the 17 yard line. First half stats are presented by Five Hour Energy. And this is what it looks like lining up. You look at the number of big plays, look at the big pops right there for Ohio State. But they haven't been one dimensional. They've been able to sustain and engineer long drives, so don't let that deceive you. But when they've had their opportunities to strike down the field, they've been very successful, largely due to Terrell Pryor. Pryor will stay in the game. How long do you expect him to play for Ohio State? Well, as Coach Tressel said going out at halftime, he wants to see if he can still continue to play at a high level consistently. Wants to throw right out of the gun, and it is dropped. Devere Posey with his first drop of 2010. Big Ten football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips Televisions. Good thing about Terrell Pryor, I talked about the love relationship that he's developing with Devere Posey, is he's throwing the ball to spots. And you didn't see that last season. He had to wait for the receivers to get in and out of breaks. Now he knows where that receiver's supposed to be, and he's been money. Pitch out, right side. Dan Heron stays on his feet and struggles out across the 30. That's going to be a pickup of 11. It's going to be a first down for Ohio State. Eric, anytime you play against great backs, you have to get population to them. You got to get a lot of bodies around them because they're very rarely going to go down at the first point of contact. That time, Heron does a nice job keeping his leg drive, showing his strong lower unit ability. This is the third season as a starter at Ohio State, Darrell Pryor. Now, Jeanette, Pennsylvania, he was the biggest recruit three years ago. Trying to live up to that billing. Had a great Rose Bowl trying to keep it up here in 2010. Out of the backfield, Dan Heron. Another big chunk of yards. He picks up nine, maybe ten yards. And this is exactly why Terrell Pryor's still in the game. So that he can show you that he's been able to read and understand what the defense has given him. That time he went through his progression and nicely checked down to the running back. These are important reps for Terrell Pryor. 
he's still growing and maturing into a high-level quarterback. Zach Bourne, the fullback in on second down and one. Aaron follows Bourne, and he's got himself a first down and then some. Out across the 50 to the 45. Heron with another 15 yards. Well, you mentioned Justin Bourne. He's the road grader up front for Ohio State. All he's going to do, all this is, is power. Gets out good blocking up front. Nice jump cut by Boom Heron. And once these backs get second level, meaning to the linebackers, they have that acceleration gear. There's the defensive coordinator for Marshall, Chris Ripon, his previous experience. Spent a long time up at Syracuse coaching with Paul Pasqualoni. He was uh, there for all four years with Donovan McNabb, and he swears he sees the new and improved version of Donovan McNabb when he looks at Terrell Pryor. Pryor using his feet now. Gets out of the pocket, lowers the shoulder. Jim Truss is unlike that, and goes out of bounds. <laughs> He took on 250-pound linebacker Mario Harvey to pick up six yards. Well, watch how Pryor finishes this run. You just mentioned Harvey's 250 pounds. Watch this. Now, we know he likes to freelance. Good job feeling the rush. Watch how Pryor finishes this. This is a linebacker, folks, who's going to go to the ground pretty quickly. Terrell Pryor's a big man, 6'6", 240-ish. He's a load to bring down. Well, uh... Next week, Jim Trestle's bunch, they're going to be taking on the Miami Hurricanes here at Ohio <laughs> Stadium. They need Terrell Pryor. That probably wasn't so wise. No. Delayed handoff to Heron. It's been all Heron here on this drive. He gets out, pick up about three yards. He's going to be a little bit shy of the first down. I thought it was really interesting when we talked to Chris Rippon, who has worked so much with Donovan McNabb. He said this guy is going to be an elite pro when he chooses to go to the NFL. Just too much athletic ability. He loves Terrell Pryor as a quarterback. This is the guy who's been game planning against him for the last three months. Well, he likes his athleticism, his DNA, and his composition. He said, you know, you got a guy that's thrown for over 3,000 yards. You know he's a playmaker. He's a quarterback first, who, by the way, happens to be a great runner. But he was comparing the skill set of Terrell Pryor to Donovan McNabb. Third down is short. Boom, Heron lowers the boom, gets the first down. Runs over Rashad Jackson, picks up five yards, and you can hear the, the chance of boom. And staying with Pryor for a second, talking to Coach Bowman, we said, you know, what is it about his development? What do you want to see? And he kind of just looked up and he said, we want him to consistently play at a high level. He said, I want to go in and know that he's always going to be hot. Not that he's just heating up. I want to know with 100% certainty that he's hot all the time. First and 10, ball in the 31. Heron still in the game. Three receivers wide right. Prior to throw, has a man, Sonsenbacher. Down to the 10 yard line. Third catch of the ball game for Sons and Bakker. He's now over 100 yards. Gain of 20 on that play. And it may seem a bit laborious, but Terrell Pryor does a nice job of directing traffic out front. He identified the Mike linebacker, so he knew where his functional wide receiver, Sons and Bakker, would be in the defense. And again, his ability to understand. Pryor threw the ball 16 times in the first half. You, you prorate that out for a full game, that's 32. Is that Ohio State's best chance to win this year if he's throwing that much? To win the big game without question. And throwing it down the field as he's demonstrating. Another beautiful throw, and it results in six. Devere Posey, touchdown, Ohio State. We saw that same play in the first quarter, and it works again for a touchdown for the Buckeyes. And this is a byproduct of lots of routes and time together in the offseason. This is a back shoulder fade once again. Defensive backs playing over the top. Pryor puts the ball only in a position where Devere Posey could catch it. Third touchdown pass of the ball game for Pryor. Second to Posey. Devin Barclay. Extra point is true. Ohio State takes the opening kickoff of the third quarter and marches methodically down the field. Pryor tosses another touchdown to Posey. Buckeyes up big.
This isn't exactly three yards and a cloud of dust for the Buckeyes. Second-ranked team in the country. They have put 42 points on Marshall. Terrell Pryor already three touchdown passes. Freshman Basil kicks it off. Andre Booker on the return. Starts at the six. Tackled out at the 23. Eric, when you're measuring the greatness of a quarterback, you want to know, can he pull the trigger and put the ball in a tight window? Look at this throw as it comes in here. Watch this trajectory. Look at that throw. It doesn't get any tighter than that. And to me, that speaks to the development of Terrell Pryor. He didn't do that a season ago. Again, he knew where his receiver was supposed to be, threw to a spot, and threw a very tight window. So Marshall's got the first, got the football for their first time here in the second half. Fifth-year senior quarterback Brian Anderson still in the ball game. We actually expected to see some of true freshman quarterback Eddie Sullivan. Anderson takes a hit, delivers a strike. It's complete to Chuck Walker, and Walker out to the 35-yard line. First down, pitch and catch. Tyler Moeller on the tackle. It's a pickup of 13 yards. Yeah, I was looking to see a lot more from Walker. He plays that H wide receiver inside, oftentimes working against linebackers. He's been the go-to guy for the Thundering Herd. But a good job of moving the chains. Ryan Anderson from Louisville he went to Mail High School. Same high school as Chris Redmond. Pretty good quarterback at Louisville. Oh, and the ball is loose in the backfield. Was that Tyler Moeller? It was. Moeller got in the backfield and forced the fumble. Marshall able to keep the football. Well, the key to that play is Brian Anderson has to do a better job at his pre-snap read. Moeller's going to come from the backside. He should see this, but he doesn't. Great closing speed and burst by Moeller to get to Anderson, but that's got to be picked up. That one is solely on the quarterback. He's got to see Moeller inching down in a pre-snap read. First sack of the ball game for the Buckeyes. Fifth-year senior safety, Tyler Moeller delivers it. Second down, spinning out of the backfield. Martin Ward surrounded by four Buckeyes. Among them, quarterback Jim DiCecqua and defensive end Solomon Thomas. Thomas has played a good game for Jim Trussell getting the start today in place of Nathan Williams. A little undersized DN. He goes about 255, but he's long, linear. Take a little of the heat off of Cameron Hayward, who plays opposite him. There's Thomas right in the middle of the screen. Good length, a little light, but wins with quickness. Third down on a bunch. Underneath, pass is complete. This is Courtney Edmondson trying to get to the marker. He does. Good little Zuzu for Edmondson. Crosses midfield. Finally brought down by C.J. Barnett, but not before a gain of 26. Great execution by Marshall. Good pocket, good timing. But if you're Ohio State, stop the bleeding. You got to get him on the ground right there. Poor tackling by the Buckeyes allows that thing to pop out the back end. And if you're a defensive coordinator, you say defensively, you play to the sticks. Keep everything in front. They sat back in the cover, too. Got to get the receiver on the ground. May not happen again this year against this Buckeye defense. Third and 16, and the opponent converts. Gain of seven yards on first down. Antavius Wilson with another catch. Wilson now with four catches on the ball game for Doc Holliday. Well, this is the time you start to look at players body language and body demeanor. It's oppressively hot out. Fatigue starts to set in. And that's usually when you allow for a big pop. So watch how Ohio State responds defensively. Can they knuckle up here and get off the field? Marshall has only scored on a blocked field goal. They haven't scored an offensive touchdown. Buckeyes show blitz. Here it comes. Throwing quickly. Anderson. Throws too high and wide, looking for his tight end, Lee Smith. That time Anderson did a nice job of identifying the middle linebacker role coming on a blitz, so he throws to his hot route, but his receiver, Smith, doesn't snap his head around, which results in an incomplete pass. 
13 of 23 for the senior Anderson. What do you expect here on third and one? I look at the slot receiver on the seam up top right here. See if they can get him in space. Now they decide to keep it on the ground and that results in a first down. Dexter Larimore on the tackle. Brings down Martin Ward but not before he picks up the first down. Good job by Marshall. They haven't had a great deal of success running between the tackles. So I thought they'd get it out on the perimeter. A little chicanery by the offensive coordinator, Bill Legg. Remember, this is a Marshall team that not only went to a bowl game a year ago, but won it. They beat Ohio University in the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. It's actually coached by an interim coach, Rick Minter, former Cincinnati Bearcat head coach. Booker is tackled by Ross Holman after a gain of two. Football fans, you can create your own football highlight reels each week with the Big Ten Football Mashup, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Go to mashup.big10network.com right now. Compile your favorite plays and share them with your friends. Sounds like a lot of fun, a lot of highlights to uh, compile from this one. Ohio State has had three different plays offensively of over 40 yards. Big playability here in 2010 for the Buckeyes. Anderson over the middle. It's caught by Wilson again, and Wilson inside the 20. You know that Wilson's got some speed. He is from Pahokee, Florida. That's where they have, uh, they play in the muck. He has caught a whitetail rabbit before in his life. Just a couple of years ago, caught one with his bare hands. So you know he can run. But this is more a function of fatigue and attrition for Ohio State. If you look at Ohio State's players, they're starting to get a lot of hands on the waist. Those are signs that they're getting tired. This has been a long drive. That's when they got to buckle up and get off the field. Ryan Anderson has thrown for 64 yards on this drive. Add a couple of more to it as he hits Chuck Walker. Nominal gain on first down. Pick up a five. Marshall's been known to recruit a lot of players out of the Florida area, so you know they have a team that's predicated on speed, which is why also they've gone to a spread to try to capitalize on it. But sometimes when you have a spread offense, it's tough for you to get the tough yardage in the red zone because the field shrinks. So it'll be interesting to see the play call right here. Four receivers in the game. Anderson pitches it out. Troy Evans can't make the first man miss. He is hammered. Brian Roll brings him down. And just to cap on that point, Eric, this is when you want to have a grown man running back. By that, I mean a big guy that's physical in the backfield that can get between the tackles and get downhill. That's not featured in the spread. And as I said, sometimes it gets tough offensively. Let's see if they try and find their big tight end. Number 16, they split him out wide. He's uh, close to the bottom of your screen. Second man from the bottom of your screen, wearing number 16. I really like Lee Smith. Well, they look the other way, and the pass is high, looking for Dobson. Flag comes down late in the Marshall backfield. Roughing the passer, defense, number 98, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. We were just praising Solomon Thomas. <laughs> Controlled emotion, just not a smart play. Controlled emotion. That was an excellent play called by Marshall, by the way. We went four receivers to one side, trying to work the backside individual cut on Chequa. What's that like in the film room? What will Coach Trestle say when they look at that? Well, just be smart. And you come off, slide off the play, find a way not to engage contact with the quarterback. Try it again. Slipping it back out of the backfield. Ball is loose. Ward loses it. Ohio State has it. Ross Holman picks up the loose ball. And the threat is averted. Ross Holman gets the fumble, but Chekwaw makes the play right there. Great job of shooting the gap, identifying the flat route, and going and shooting his guns, as we say. Couple of fifth-year seniors combining. Chekwaw with the strip, Ross Holman with the recovery, and a drive that took six minutes and 21 seconds off the game clock comes up absolutely empty for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Number two ranked team in the country, Ohio State playing like the number two ranked team in the country. 
They are up 42 to 7 over Marshall here in the season opener. They've got the ball first and 10 on the five yard line. Hand off to Dan Heron. Gain of a couple. Carissa Thompson is down on the field with a very special guest. Carissa. A very special guest indeed. VIP Gene Smith, ladies and gentlemen, athletic director entering his sixth year as an athletic director. Now, Gene, very important announcement was made yesterday on the Big Ten oh. Network. Jim Delaney on there. Look, he's pretty good savvy with the whole TV yeah, thing, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he knows this, this uh, deal, you know. You know he's good. Making his announcement, of course, on the new alignment of the divisions. Your right. thoughts? Well, I thought it turned out great, you know. Uh, for our fans and uh, for all of our schools, it was just uh, really special to come up with uh, divisions and schedules that I think everybody will enjoy for years to come. Because well, a big concern was, is there going to be that Ohio State-Michigan game on the last game of the season? Looks like it actually will hold place. So good news for you. Yeah, good news for us, and our fans are excited about that. Frankly, I couldn't be on this field talking to you uh, if that didn't happen. And uh, our fans are passionate, and they shared a lot of great thoughts about that. And uh, so I'm just glad it worked out, and I thank my colleagues for working with us on that. Well, you got to like this score so far. A good way to start oh, the season. I love season. this score. Like, we can stop right now and go home. It's all good for <laughs> me. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll let you go, Gene. Thank Thanks you. for the time. Appreciate it. Take care. Gentlemen, take it away. Gene Smith presiding over uh, one of the many golden ages of Ohio State uh, athletics. Thank you for joining us, Gene. Appreciate it. Third down at six. Jordan Hall now in the game in the backfield with Terrell Pryor. Pryor makes the first man miss. Has time. And completes it to his tight end. Third catch of the ball game for Jake Stoneburn, the sophomore. This is what we're talking about. Uh, these are not the actual names of the divisions. That's yet to be decided. But uh, for our intents and purposes, the X and the O division. Ohio State lumped together with Illinois, Indiana, Penn State, Purdue, and Wisconsin. On the other side, Iowa lumped with the two Michigan schools, Minnesota, the newcomer Nebraska, and the Northwestern Wildcats find themselves in that division. So Ohio State and Michigan separated, but they are guaranteed of playing every year because they're what's called a protected rivalry. And for the near future, that game will last uh, at the very end of the season. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover game break. We'll keep it right now. We'll go to Dave in just a moment. I'm sure he's got interesting things to talk about. Well, you know, Eric, we showed the divisions there, and I must admit the Big Ten exceeded my expectations. I did not think it'd get broken down that way, but talk about competitive balance, logistically, the cost, the cachet. They knocked the cover off the ball. Good run. Jordan Hall, high school teammate of Terrell Pryor, Jeanette, Pennsylvania. He rips off a gain of seven yards, matches his jersey number. Maybe a shot you've never seen. The horseshoe. This old barn. 102,000 shoehorned in here. <laughs> Built back in 1922. Originally, Seated 66,000. They said, you'll never fill it. Little did they know. Guess what? Pocket collapses, and Plyer is going to be sacked. Backup defensive tackle, Michael Janik, gets the sack. Loss of three. Eric, the difference between young quarterbacks and savvy quarterbacks as it relates to pressure is young quarterbacks have to see the pressure coming. Savvy veteran quarterbacks can feel pressure. And Tyrell Pryor... Terrell Pryor is showing that he can feel pressure, and that's a sign of maturation as well, also. Second down at 13. Fake the handoff to Hall. Pryor keeps it. Look at the speed. Gets away from the first wave of defenders and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Marshall throwing in an interesting little wrinkle. A little corner fire. You're going to watch it come from right here. Watch the cornerback come out. Good play call. First time we've seen that tonight. Trying to give Pryor another wrinkle to think about. Good execution by Marshall. Well, that'll do it. Third quarter draws to a close. Ohio State, they extend their lead. They have the only score this third quarter. Touchdown, Pryor to Posey. We come back, quarter number four in Columbus. Watch the guys fly. Yeah. Ohio State, they haven't lost a home opener since 1978. Doesn't look like they're going to lose this year. 
Last time Ohio State lost a home opener against Penn State. 78. That was the final year. Woody Hayes had to controls for the Buckeyes. 19 to nothing win for Penn State. Joe Paterno was indeed the head coach for Penn State back then. Catch made by Jordan Hall. He gets out to the 50 yard line. Time now for the Big Ten flashback presented by Wolf Chili. We take you back to a quite possibly Terrell Pryor's coming out party. Last year's Rose Bowl, he was just phenomenal. Isn't it amazing what confidence can do for a quarterback, too, coming off of that performance? How many throws have we seen like that tonight? He knows he could do it. First Big Ten quarterback to return after winning the Rose Bowl MVP since Joe Germain back in 1997. He was a good one. Another rush by Jordan Hall. He's been a revelation here in the second half. Fourth down and one. They got eight. Those are the alumni <laughs> cheerleaders. <laughs> Number school's not in session here at Ohio State. So all hands on deck. <laughs> They're Who can help out? Pinch hitting. They're doing their thing, though. Well, they've certainly had a lot to cheer about. Number two has been on it, Terrell Pryor. Grant Schwartz has been uh, part of the offense, his third catch. Next week, Ohio State on this field. They will take on the Miami Hurricanes. Randy Shannon's bunch will come to town. Obviously, a big non-conference game for the Buckeyes. And the story is going to be on the quarterbacks. Terrell Pryor, Ja'Cory Harris. Ja'Cory Harris is an interesting player because when he's hot, he's hot as fish grease. But he will complete passes to the other team. He throws a lot of interceptions. That will be a great battle for the Buckeyes. And Miami, they have been improving the last handful of years. Randy Shannon has had his team from five wins to seven wins to nine wins a year ago. Obviously, Miami always loaded talent-wise. Stay tuned for the State Farm wrap-up for scores, highlights, and analysis of all tonight's game. That will be immediately following this contest. A couple other games around the Big Ten. Minnesota on the road taking on Middle Tennessee State and Towson. Uh, at Indiana. Again, these are valuable snaps, valuable reps. It's Terrell Pryor's getting a lot of looks from Marshall. Pryor's completed his last six passes. Needs to do it here on third down. And that pass is low and behind the intended receiver. That's the fullback, Adam Holman. Ross's brother coming out of the backfield. Can't hold on, and it's going to bring up fourth down and four. And from this spot on the field, I really don't know what Coach Truss is going to do. He's thinking through it, circling the troops. They're going to send out the punt unit. Ben Buchanan will come on. This is his first punt of the second half. So far today, Buchanan two punts, 81 yards, an average of 40 and a half. High kick, fair catch called for by Troy Evans, and he makes it at the eight yard line. Punt of 30 yards, no return. Come out of the field. Buckeyes up 35. Twelve twenty remaining. Season opener for Ohio State. They lead Marshall 42 to 7. Ohio State has substituted their entire second unit on the defensive line onto the field. From the shotgun, Ryan Anderson takes the snap and hands it off. New tailback in the game. This is a true freshman, Tron Martinez. Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover game break. Eric, thanks. Here is the latest from Bloomington, and the Hoosiers looking good against Towson. Matt Ernest converted wide receiver showing off the hands. 57-yard interception return. Indiana leads it 48-14. to Guys. Thank you, Dave. Bill Lynch smiling. We know that Indiana can score. Very talented team. Defense is going to be the big story in Bloomington. Pitch out and a hard hit. Driven out of bounds is Tron Martinez. Here are the results from today's Verizon text to vote. 
Tonight's question was, will Ohio State play in the 2011 BCS Championship game? Look at this, 83% saying yes, the Buckeyes, they're going to do it. They're in the driver's seat, currently ranked second in the country. Just need to hold serve and win impressively. And that will ultimately be the key. And again, as we said earlier, championship teams, they do it in all three phases of the game. So the Buckeyes will have to sharpen their pencils, particularly on special teams. Third down at four. Incomplete. Jim DiCecqua, who we didn't expect to play a ton, still in on the game. And he breaks up that pass. Tonight's Polaris, hardest working player. It is number 26. Fifth year senior from Cincinnati. Just a heartwarming story. Tyler Moeller hadn't played in two years. He missed all of last season with a brain injury. Had swelling of the brain. Actually had, had holes drilled into his skull to try and relieve the swelling. He is not only back healthy, but he is the hardest hitter and the hardest working player of the game. Yeah, and he's the tempo setter for that defense. His teammates see him flying around playing with intensity and toughness, and they feed on that energy. He's playing what they call the star around here, and he has been the defensive star. Delay. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Remains fourth down. Troubles continue for Doc Holliday's team. Marshall trying to recapture the magic. They were phenomenal back at the 1AA level in the 90s when they first moved to 1A FBS. They were very good playing in the MAC. Ever since they've gone to Conference USA, they've really struggled. On the return, this is Corey Brown. True freshman from Philadelphia. Rifles out to the 43-yard line. Come out on the field. Ohio State with the ball when we come back. Presented by Phillips Television. So amazing, you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. And by Rotel and Velveeta. Try Rotel and Velveeta's famous queso dip, the ultimate game day snack. And by Wolf Chili. Open up a big old can of Texas. Seven is our score. Interesting moment now for Ohio State. Terrell Pryor is out. And uh, a lot of people interested in seeing what Joe Bowserman can do. He's the new quarterback. Hands it off to Jordan Hall, who picks up three. Bowserman is uh, an older guy, 25 years of age. He'll be 26 in about a month's time. Redshirt Jr., he's from Strasburg, Virginia. If that sounds familiar, <laughs> earlier this year in the news, because uh, they wanted to change temporarily the name of the town from Strasburg, Virginia to Steven Strasburg, Virginia when he got <laughs> called up by the Washington Nationals. Some people actually thought they were serious and they petitioned the city council so they never actually did it. But that's why you may have heard of Strasburg, Virginia before. <laughs> Jordan Hall right side. Another good game. And it's another first down for Ohio State. Now let's take a look at our Chex Mix fan cam. That's just a uh, it's a small sampling of the 105,000 fans here at the Horseshoe tonight. Another huge crowd watch Buckeye football. You have to love the passion exuded by Buckeye fans. Tremendous football intelligence. They understand the game, and they get lathered up each week. There's Bowserman. The reason why he's a little longer in the tooth than his teammates. He played three seasons of minor league baseball in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Fourth round pick of the Pirates back in 2004. Gives it to Jamal Berry who picks up five yards. Let's take a look at our Rotel Velveeta combination of the game and it's similar to what we saw in the Rose Bowl prior to Sansenbacher. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of defensive backs that are getting fear struck in them because they were down long distance. And again, just the confidence, the poise, standing tall. Delivering the ball accurately and decisively. There's a lot of DBs right now watching this saying, oh my, Terrell Pryor's figured it out. That's redshirt freshman Corey Lindsley being helped off the field. 
Beginning of the ball game, you mentioned you had a checklist of things that you wanted to see out of Terrell Pryor. Uh, what were those things, and did you see them? Well, I wanted, him to, I wanted to see him stand tall in the pocket, have good presence, throw the ball down the field with velocity, which he struggled with last year, and accuracy. And he has done that absolutely to the T today. Very, a lot of people interested in seeing him. Redshirt freshman from Pinecrest, Florida. They say he is improving by leaps and bounds. Picks up three yards. And perhaps the best thing that I saw with Terrell Pryor is his judgment, his ability to understand. He now knows when def defenses give him different looks, he can read and diagnose, understand. He is much better from the neck up. And as a result, you see this. And by the way, the three touchdowns. It's just, it, sometimes being a player, it starts to click. And clearly we can see for Pryor it has. Third down and two, Bausman out of the gun. Quick pitch and catch. Caught by Corey Brown. There are two Corey Browns on the roster. This one, true freshman from Philadelphia. Thus he's got the nickname of Philly Brown. <laughs> Makes sense. Keep it simple. He's going to be short of the first down marker, so it's going to be fourth down and a whisker. And uh, no decisiveness out of Jim Trussell. He's going to keep the clock moving, and he's going to bring on the field goal unit. Chance to work on the uh, special teams unit, Devin Barclay. This will be a 34-yard attempt. Buckeyes have had one of these deals blocked in the ball game. This one gets over the line of scrimmage and through the uprights. 34-yard field goal for Barclay. Buckeyes now up 45 to 7. Lots to cheer about for the Ohio State Buckeyes. 45 to 7 is their lead with uh, Chris Martin and Carissa Thompson. I'm Eric Collins finishing off quarter number four. From the six-yard line, full head of steam, Martin Ward out across the 25. Time now for tonight's sprint epic run, and it's going to feature Brandon Sane. Well, one of the great attributes that often gets overlooked in running backs is vision. And the great running backs, they run with their eyes. That time, Brandon Sane did a great job. Balance, cutback, but most importantly, vision. Brandon Sane is sprint champion. Piqua Senior High School, just outside of Dayton. New quarterback in the game for Marshall, Eddie Sullivan, true freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. Originally committed to Wake Forest. After Doc Holliday took over here at Marshall, he decided to go with him. That pass is incomplete. Uh, not running the proper right, Martin Ward was actually out of bounds. Excess Jermaine Kelson was out of bounds when he caught the ball. And you talk to the coaches at Marshall, and they, you ask them about a guy, and if they ever tell you this kid's got something to him, it means they really like him. And Eddie Sullivan, that play was incomplete, but he pulled the trigger. This kid's an intriguing player, moves around extremely well. He can spin it, throw it down the field, but he's also extremely athletic. Second down at 10. Sullivan showing off a big arm. Incomplete. Troy Evans had it, then lost it. And there's a reason why he lost it. Got stuck by C.J. Barnett. Now, keep in mind, this is a quarterback who's coming in the game cold, pulling the trigger and putting the ball right on the numbers. His receiver's got to make that catch. But <laughs> your young quarterback, freshman, coming into this hostile environment cold, and you put a ball in the numbers, it tells you this kid, he's got a bright future. He's not intimidated either. Third down and 10. Ohio State hasn't given up an offensive touchdown for Marshall. Thundering her at only touchdown coming on a blocked field goal attempt. Another line drive. This one to no one in particular. There is a flag down on the field. Scott McElwee has been busy. Illegal formation, five players in the backfield. Offense. 
going to bring up fourth down for Marshall. Next Thursday, find out how former Big Ten stars made it big on the next level. The series premiere. It's former Michigan standout and current NFL star, Dahani Jones. The next level premieres next Thursday at 8 Eastern time on Big Ten Network. I saw Dahani Jones in the Cincinnati airport a couple of months ago. I swear to you, he had a book that looked to be about 900 pages tucked <laughs> underneath his arm. Interesting guy. I have a lot of pictures. <laughs> No pictures. <laughs> Time out in the field. Ohio State's going to have the ball once again when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Buckeyes trying to win their 33rd consecutive home opener on top of Marshall. Big seven minutes remaining before this ball is snapped. We're going to have a penalty. Joe Ball snap. Ball start. Off. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Watch Big Ten games at home or watch them on the go with Verizon. Live college games, including Big Ten Network broadcast, streaming right to your VCast phone. Only from Verizon. Watch Joe Bowserman, redshirt junior, now conducting his second series in relief of Terrell Brower. Big arm. Don't know if he's going to air it out. The Buckeyes up 38, but this guy's got a hose. Using the feet to get loose. Whips it down the field, and it's incomplete. Looking for that true freshman, Corey Brown, and he just bobbles it out of bounds. Bowserman, though, giving you a snippet of what he can do. Watch this rollout left. This is Terrell Pryor's, one of his favorite plays. Look where that ball is. That's a hard throw. On the move. Spot on. Well. Fighting the football. Soft hands receiver. When Bowserman was a pitcher in the Pirates organization, he was voted by a publication as having the best changeup in the entire Pirates organization. He was a pitcher who was crafty. Here in the football field, he is considered to be a guy with a huge arm. Mm -hmm. Left side, this is the first carry of the ball game for Carlos Hyde. He's from Naples, Florida. Spent last year at Fork Union Military Academy. If that sounds familiar to Buckeye fans in the know, that's because that's where Eddie George finished up his high school playing career, came to Ohio State, and then, of course, won his Heisman. Yep. Played against Eddie when he was here. Great player. Big physical back. Built more like a tight end. Extremely quick also. Hyde is now the fifth different tailback we've seen in the ballgame. Aaron, Sane, Jamal Berry, Jordan Hall, and now Carlos Hyde. Bowserman takes off. He's caught from behind. Vinnie Curry. Kid out of Cincinnati. Again, given something to crow about when he sees his high school coaches, Carlos Snow and Vinnie Clark, two former Buckeyes. I love to see players still fighting and clawing because I've been in games like this in the early 90s at Northwestern when you look up at the scoreboard and you're wanting to find out where the bus is. But it's can you fight through it, understanding that you have a lot of season left, and can you continue to fight and make plays? I love what I saw with Vinnie Curry. Another important opportunity for Ben Buchanan, who's going to have to march back an extra five yards. Belay, offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Chris, we know that uh, Randy Shannon and his coaching staff down at Miami at the Hurricanes, they're watching our broadcast as we speak. They're getting ready for next week's game against Ohio State. What have they seen so far on this game tape? Well, just go back to it. The, the knock. If you look at Terrell Pryor, when you want to defend him, before you would say, make him beat you with his arm, make him make quick decisions because he has a tough time understanding defenses. But he's shown you just the opposite tonight fact that he can throw the ball consistently down the field. He can make the reads. He can do the check downs when he needs to. There's a lot of film study and preparation for Coach Shannon going into this week because Terrell Pryor, the deficiencies that he showed last week or last year, excuse me, are just the opposite this year. Strengths and weaknesses from the defense that you've seen so far through the first uh, 55 minutes of play. Well, they, they've had to keep it up tempo because Marshall's not huddling up, so they, they're well-conditioned. They've given up some big plays. 
but overall, I think they're just gelling, finding that cohesiveness as a defense. They have some young players who are inexperienced, and that takes time. Players get better by playing in games, not in practice. Maybe two of the big highlights for Ohio State in this ball game. Jim Chekwa, we didn't know how much we'd see of him. He's got a hamstring injury. He'd been hobbled the last couple of weeks. He's played virtually this entire ball game. And Tyler Moeller, who hadn't played in over a calendar year with that head injury, they didn't know what they'd get out of him. He has been a missile coming out of that defensive backfield. He has been yeah. a special difference maker. He has. In all great defense, they know where their help is. And the nice thing about Ohio State is they've been funneling plays back inside, trusting that their teammate's going to be there. A couple of true freshmen in the backfield for Marshall. Quarterback Eddie Sullivan next to him, Tron Martinez. Long wind-up pass is complete out in space. First tackle is missed. And all the way across the 40-yard line with that reception. Now stay tuned for the State Farm wrap-up for scores, highlights, and analysis of tonight's game. Immediately coming your way. Dave Revson, Howard Griffin, Jerry Donardo standing by watching all the action this evening. I think one of the things that Coach Shannon also in his prep for this week, he's going to look at the play of Ohio State's safeties because he understands that they lost Anderson Russell, Kurt Coleman, very effective safeties from a season ago. That's a lot of production. And so he's going to look at the film and see how the safeties responded this year and find out if that's a cavity or if it's an area where they can strike with some success. Ohio State just with one sack on the day that didn't come from the front four, even the front seven. It came from the safety molar blitzing. It was an open side blitz, and it was just good feel from him. He timed it up perfect, perfectly. Excuse me. But we also talked, as I said earlier, that was more on the quarterback, Brian Anderson, not doing a pre-snap read. Ohio State, you've had the luxury of not having to bring blitz packages because you can get pressure with your front four. Middle screen is busted up, trying to get it to Jermaine Kelson. I think going into this, Eric, I, I was curious to see how Pryor would play. I knew he had confidence coming out of the Rose Bowl, and confidence, when you bottle that up, it's immeasurable. I wasn't sure how the run game would be between Sane and Heron, who would step up. Sane clearly has done that. And then defensively, I've been impressed with the play of the safeties. Ball loose on the ground, busted play, and making something out of nothing. Sullivan is going to make it a fourth down and manageable. Picks up seven, maybe eight. It's going to be a fourth down and three. Now before this fourth down play, let's go down to the field. Carissa, what's going on? Well, guys, former linebacker Marcus Freeman is back on the sidelines for the Buckeyes, but this time as a coach working alongside Luke Fickle. Unfortunately for Marcus, who was drafted in 09 by the Bears, he ended up with the Colts. He, they found an enlarged heart valve, and it forced him to end his career shortly, but he's now back on the sidelines coaching. Jim Trestle gave him that opportunity. He says he's still trying to get used to uh, being called a coach, but uh, he likes the fit <laughs> so far. Thanks, Carissa. He was, he was special. Yeah, he was. Great player, great person. And what I like, as we see, almost got the punt block there, is that Coach Trestle reached back and brought him back into the program. I think that speaks a lot about Coach Trestle and the family of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Besides that, not much has changed on the coaching staff for Jim Trestle. Jim Bowman, who has been by his side, offensive coordinator for so many years, still in town. Defensive side once again. Jim Haycock calling the shots for that sil <laughs> silver bullet defense. Yeah, don't complicate success. It's been working for the Buckeyes. No need to make changes. Another possession for the Buckeyes. New quarterback in the game. This is Kenny Guyton. He hands it off, gets it to Jamal Berry. Berry's best run as a collegian. He gets out across the 30. Barry, a redshirt freshman, Pinecrest, Florida. A lot of people like him. Big time recruit two years ago. Pick up 21 yards. There's Kenny Guyton, redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. What's interesting about Ohio State is they have a stable of young backs, too, that have caught my eye. You mentioned Hall. He's shown that he, he's flashed big plays. They're pretty deep at the running back position. 
This is Guyton with the keeper, picks up two. Interesting guy is Kenny Guyton. He's the third team quarterback, but you can see he's got the measurable 6'2, 190 pounds. They think he's going to do good things with his feet. He's got a, a good enough arm to succeed. Getting the signals from the sideline, and you'd love to see that from young guys who've probably been on the scout team, busting their tails, trying to get the defense ready. Let them go out there and get some active reps. Barry with another carry. He uses that wiggle, gets out to the 49 yard line. Jamal Barry showing something on this drive, picks up 13. On September 18th, the Big Ten Network will unveil a remarkable new series that counts down the top athletes in the conference's rich history. It's called Big Ten Icons, and it's presented by Discover. Hosted by one of the all time greats, Keith Jackson, will bring it to you starting Saturday, September 18th. Go to Big Ten Icons.com for more information. That's the top 50 icons. As plucked by uh, a lot of people in the know. And we're talking just great names. Trying to make a name for himself here is Jamal Berry. And he gets inside the 25 down to the 22. Game's not over for Jamal Berry. <laughs> he is just turning the legs, picks up 30 more. He's amped up. Good blocking up front. Big Hog's been doing it all night. Good job. When he gets in the open field, he has a little wiggle to his game, so he's tough to bring down. Florida guy, you know he has speed. Something you can't teach. Movement right side of the line. Seventy-eight. Call that penalty on the true freshman from Cincinnati, Andrew Norwell. Probably should just congratulate Norwell for being able to get on the field here in his first game as a collegiate. Getting on the field as a tackle, that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. But that'll be the other point of emphasis going into this week for Coach Stressel is he understands that you have to play a more disciplined brand, can't have so many penalties. Option football, Guyton keeps it and is wrapped up. Well, it's not just the game next week that is going to be huge for Ohio State this season. Some other big games for the Buckeyes. They are on the road this year, a night game in Wisconsin. That is October 16th. And then a game I know that you're looking forward to in Iowa, November 20th. <laughs> Not that Jim Trestle, the other Jim Trestle will to take the his Buckeyes to Iowa to take on Kirk Ferentz's bunch. Yeah, and I've always said college or pro Iowa, Kinnick Stadium is the toughest place I've ever had to play. Barry, a hard man to bring down one on one. And it's come to this final minute of the game. It's time to announce the Phillips player of the game. And who else? Number two, Darrell Pryor. You know, I learned a long time ago you never get too hot or cold on a player just off of one game. So you look at Terrell Pryor, you say what he did in the Rose Bowl. But he came out and proved that that wasn't a fluke in all phases of his game. Getting a little sloppy here, final couple of minutes of the game. Chris, you do this for a living. Who's the uh that false start offense, number 72. Who's the Heisman favorite in your eyes? <laughs> a little early in the season, I realize that. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of people say number two's got to be in the forefront. Uh, with all seriousness, Terrell Pryor certainly in that conversation. There's some great players out there wall to wall, but I think he's getting out the gates was a pretty good start to make his case. Last year's winner, Mark Ingram of Alabama, already ruled out for this week's game for the Crimson Tide. So Terrell Pryor with the early lead in the Hodgman Palace. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it. Ohio State, the offense, impressive. The defense, they do not allow an offensive touchdown for Marshall. Really, the only hiccup for Ohio State was the special teams. That's something that Jim Tressel will have to shore up uh, in the next nine days before they take on Miami here at Ohio Stadium. Correct. The special teams as well as the, the penalties, but they will correct that this week. All right, Chris is standing by with the happy head coach. Chris, take it away. A, a very happy head coach, I'm sure, but I'm sure there was a lot of question marks that still need to be answered for you moving forward. What's something that you learned about your squad tonight? 
Well, I think they're interested in, in becoming a good team, and I think they'll, when we look at the film and see all the things that we've got to do better, they'll be very open to, to working on those things. And, but it's always good to get a, get a win, and, and uh, proud of these kids. Penalties is another thing I know that you'll probably want to clean up next week before Miami. How do you correct that? I'm sure there'll be a long list of things, but uh, now we've got one under our belt, and now we can go back and watch the film, and, and uh, we know we're getting ready to play a great football team, and we're excited. Coach, who's always coaching, I appreciate the time as Thank always. You. Thanks, Jim. Guys. Carissa, thank you so much. The Buckeyes, they win and prove to 1 0. That's now 33 straight home openers won by the Buckeyes. Final thoughts, Chris. Coaches coach, players play. The players came out here and represented for the Buckeyes. Brandon Sane, couple of rushing touchdowns. Devere Posey, couple of receiving touchdowns. Terrell Pryor, three touchdown passes. That's it from Columbus. Final score Ohio State 45, Marshall 7. For Chris Martin, Marissa Thompson, I'm Eric Collins. Now let's send you to the State Farm wrap up and Dave Revson in our Chicago studio.